Today we'll be looking at Himiko Toga, one of the most sinister members of the League of Villains from the popular My Hero Academia. Here we go! Hey guys, Raven here. Before we start, if you like toys and gaming videos, consider subscribing to Raven's Playroom. Looking at the box of Himiko, it's colored pink. She looks innocent until you look at the back part and then you see the bloody knife and her equipment for gathering blood. Checking out the pieces that came out of the box, it includes of course Himiko herself with a standard mischievous faceplate. Another that looks like she's happy and lastly, a more sinister look. What I really like about the faceplates is that they have maintained the pinky blush on her face. Next is a collar, her mask. I wonder if I could get a mask like this for going out. A bunch of hands in different poses. This one looks to be a tongue that's sticking out. One bent leg. A standard 13 hole base. Connectors. Her special equipment and a couple of parts that came with it like syringes and the needles. The word shuk. What? And I almost forgot because it's really small. The bloody knife. So one of the face plates has a swappable mouthpiece to show the tongue that's sticking out. This is really interesting and unique. I think I've never seen one before. Playing around with all the pieces that came with it, this is one of the poses that I came up with where her left leg is bent and she is putting the bloody knife near her mouth. Very sinister. And she looks happy doing it too. After quite some time figuring out how to put the collar and her mask, I'll go ahead and show it to you. First, you gotta take the head part off and then put the collar and the hole on the mask before inserting the head back. This way, the mask and the collar are secured in place and it would look like this. One of the more difficult assemblies to do with Himiko would be her equipment. As you can see, it would look like this but thinking on how to get it on her waist is a real challenge. Then comes two parts that initially I did not have any idea what they were for but it looks like these parts are put on each of her legs and then they would show up to be like this. Honestly, after 10 minutes of trying to figure out on my own how to put the equipment on her waist, I gave up and checked the instructions. So what you must do is to hold the wire part tight on her waist. This is a lot easier to accomplish if you take out the head part and the arms first. And once you have secured the belt in place, you can simply push the backpack like part and it would perfectly fit where you would usually attach the connector of the Nendoroid to. There are two holes on each side of the backpack to secure the belt and ta-da! Here she goes. I really like the tongue that's sticking out in one of the face plates. Unfortunately, this is not possible with the mask on. All of my other Hero Academia Nendoroids are posed with their costumes and that's what I'll do with Himiko as well. Himiko Toga is one of my favorite anime characters alongside with Yuno Gasai from my future diary. Probably because there is an innocent and mischievous look combined. They are very unpredictable, almost like they have multiple personalities. Himiko's quirk is to transform to someone else. And I would've wanted to see a bit of creativity on how Good Smile would incorporate her quirk to the Nendoroid. But I really don't have any idea how to do that on the top of my head. Overall, Himiko as a Nendoroid is excellent. The details on her hair, the recreated bloody knife, and her equipment matched with the sinister faceplates are fun to play with. Although, simple with her lower body as it included only one bent leg and no joint on her knees. This probably can be compensated by using parts from other Nendoroids, and the League of Villains will never be complete without Himiko. With that said, I am looking forward to Dabby next. Thanks for watching guys, and see you all on the next video.